I'm on a bit of a Victoria Line kick at the moment. The history of that line is insanely convoluted, as you might have figured out from some of my recent videos. Today I want to look at the northern end at Walthamstow Central. Not just at Walthamstow Central though, but the other Walthamstow tube station, the one we didn't get. So basically, in the very early stages of planning the rail route that would eventually become the Victoria Line, they knew it would end somewhere in northeast London. Exactly where they wanted to end it changed over time. The first version of the line was going to terminate at Waltham Cross. Later, they favoured the idea of Seven Sisters or South Tottenham. Seven Sisters, of course, is on the Victoria Line we got, and South Tottenham is just a short distance from that. One consistent factor from early on was the notion that a branch line to Walthamstow was possibly desirable. Those exact words. One of the big priorities for the Victoria Line was to bring relief to other lines in London, both underground and main line. It should, therefore, connect with as many as possible. You can see this now, when every station except Pimlico is an interchange of some sort. In 1947, London Transport proposed something called Scheme D. This was the first plan for a new line that would terminate in Walthamstow. But what's quite interesting is that after Black Horse Road, the line would split in two. One branch would end at Walthamstow Hoe Street, the station that would later be renamed Walthamstow Central. The other would end at Wood Street, which, of course, does not have an underground connection today. So first, let's take a brief look at the history of these two stations. Walthamstow was exactly the sort of place that winds up becoming a London suburb. Near enough to London to be convenient for travel, far enough to feel a little bit less urban. By the 1860s, housing development was really picking up the pace, and the Great Eastern Railway were keen to get in on the action, with a line passing through here running to Chingford. As regular viewers will know, the Great Eastern were a pretty impoverished railway, so they opened the line in stages. In 1870, they opened the section that includes Ho Street. This only went as far as a station called Shern Hall Street, slightly east of Ho Street, just before Wood Street. In 1873, the line was extended to Chingford. Shern Hall Street was closed and replaced with Wood Street. The Chingford branch, whose central London terminus was at Liverpool Street, was a popular and rather overcrowded line. The Great Eastern Railway had a slightly odd relationship with this overcrowding. On the one hand, they liked the fact that they had a service that was actually profitable. But on the other, it meant that they faced competition. They couldn't run any more services with the slow-to-accelerate steam engines. They couldn't afford to electrify their lines, and new proposals were put forward for underground lines that would directly compete with them. The Great Eastern fiercely resisted any competing rail schemes, but they didn't really have an alternative of their own. In 1902, they responded by building a bizarre steam locomotive known as the Decapod, which, they claimed, could do anything an electric train could. It didn't really work, but it was enough to get the parliamentary bills for competing lines defeated. I keep thinking I should do a video on the Decapod. Let me know in the comments if that would be of interest. Anyway, by the 1940s, the situation was becoming intolerable, and electrification was considered a priority. This was completed in 1960. Also considered essential was the idea of new lines to take the pressure off, hence the eventual coming of the Victoria Line. The 1947 version of the line, the one that branched off to Wood Street and Ho Street, always seemed a little odd to me. These two stations are next to each other on the Chingford branch, so I'm not clear why they wanted to serve both. In 1949, a revised version of the line was put forward. This was going to split into two after Seven Sisters slash South Tottenham. One branch would go to Angel Road, God help us, and the other would go to Walthamstow. On this version, Wood Street would follow Ho Street. Ho Street wouldn't be directly connected to the main line station due to the difficulty of aligning the tunnels to meet both stations. 
1951, the plan was revised again. Angel Road would go, Walthamstow would stay. But by the end of the 1950s, questions of economy were really starting to bite. There was an endless tug-of-war between the London Transport Executive and the government over money, which is a major reason why the line kept getting delayed. The feeling in the corridors of power was that this Victoria line was looking pretty expensive, and were there any places where they could cut back? At one point, everything north of Seven Sisters was on the chopping block, but eventually the compromise was to get rid of Wood Street and terminate at Ho Street. In 1962, the go-ahead was given. The Victoria Line opened in 1968, and at this time, Ho Street was renamed to Walthamstow Central because Stowe's before Ho's. You can really see where money was saved at Walthamstow Central. The old station, which became part of the overground in 2015, has elaborate ironwork and a charming wooden canopy. The bit built for the underground is, if we're being polite, minimalist. If we're not being polite, basic. And if we're being downright rude, short-sighted and unfit for purpose in the long run. Even with an additional exit built in 2005 to serve the new bus station over the road, the station suffers badly from overcrowding. In fact, in 2019, the last full year before everything went insane and all the statistics for the underground went up the spout, it was revealed to be the third most overcrowded tube station after Oxford Circus and Bank. Badly designed stations are kind of a problem on the Victoria Line in general. Basically, the stations we got were another victim of the economy drive. Beyond a certain point, the money men told the architects that they couldn't keep revising their designs. they just have to stick with what they had, even if it fell behind the requirements of the line. We're not made of money, you know. Which raises the question, would the situation have been improved if the Victoria Line went to Wood Street as well? I'll leave you with that question. Hello all, I was lying when I said I was leaving. I hope you enjoyed this overcrowded tale from the tube. If you did, you may wish to crowd around the like button, or perhaps join the throngs of subscribers for more videos like this. Thanks as always to my ever-generous donors on Kofi and Patreon, you are the Victoria Line to my Chinkford branch. And I'll see you all again very soon for another tale from the tube.